Hello and welcome to PBR TV. In this episode, I have a chat with Mike and Tim of MDL Marinas to talk through their 2021 plans, which seem pretty exciting on paper with a rollout of multiple boat shows and also their MDL fitness brand. So let's jump onto that call now and uh, catch up with everything MDL. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, joining PBR TV today to talk about your 2021 plans. From what I've heard, they're very exciting. So for those that don't know you guys and the, the faces sort of behind the brand, um, Tim, Mike, can you introduce yourselves? And uh, maybe we'll, we'll start with Mike. Uh, what, what's your role within the company and, and, and uh, your, your position so people can get to know you guys? Well, firstly, thanks ever so much for uh, having us come and talk to you today. Um, my role is the uh, managing director. I've been with MDL Marinas for 15 years, been in the industry for over 20 years. Um, and um, a lot of your uh, readers stroke viewers will hopefully have, uh, have met me through the customer forums and tenant forums that we've been doing over the last a uh, few weeks and months, but uh, if they don't know me, this is me. Uh, and obviously we're, we're open to um, hopefully being able to talk about our plans for this, uh, for this, for this next year. Yeah, great stuff. And, and Tim, uh, what's your role within the company? Yeah, hi Tom. Um, so my name's Tim and I'm the sales and marketing director for MDL. Fantastic. So guys, we've spoken a little bit um, off, off camera and, and over the last few weeks about, about your plans and they're quite exciting. And um, in the current circumstances that we find ourselves in, it's it's a bit of a bold move to launch a number of boat shows this year, not, not, not just one. So um, can you tell us a little bit about the sort of motivation behind that and, and maybe the, the thinking of the decision uh, that MDL have taken to, to roll out multiple shows? Okay, well, that's, that's a great question. So we've been working on um, several initiatives over the last uh, few years to um, uh, develop you know, new products and services that are um, both great for the industry, but also really, really help to uh, support our tenants and our, and our berth holders. Um, your listeners might, uh, might not know that we've got over 550 uh, trading tenants right across the business, and they have all sorts of different parts to play uh, within the marina industry. Some of them are brokers, some of them are boat dealers, uh, and some of those tenants you know, don't, don't particularly focus uh, their efforts on the marina industry. So from our perspective, uh, one of the things that we wanted to make sure we were doing is providing services that our customers and our tenants really want, that helps people to both sell products, so in this case it might be uh, boats, but it also helps our customers to know that they've got places to go uh, and, and trusted um, providers to be able to talk to to buy, do their boat purchasing or do their, um, their servicing or uh, buy other, uh, other products and services from you know, the, the, the sort of lifeblood of the marina industry uh, within our network. Um, so the, the four boat shows really is predicated on being able to get uh, boat dealers in front of customers, um, but also being able to do something slightly different um, in terms of moving uh, perhaps the, uh, the marina industry forward and helping to support the marine industry in our focus on the green tech show, which is obviously something new and different. And I know Tim's going to talk a little bit about that uh, later on. In terms of the background and the and the landscape of, of what we're doing, you know, right now, what we didn't want to do is with the pandemic going on, um, just uh, hold fire on all of our plans. And we've got other things going on, other projects as well. Um, and uh, and so what the boat show plan gives us the opportunity to do is to market to uh, customers that we are still here, we are still open for business when the government restrictions. Uh, you know, hopefully fall away in time uh, and we'll all be ready to go for a great boating season and won't it be fantastic to get together in a COVID safe way uh, to have some boat shows and we hope to do those in, in the future after the pandemic is over. And I know my experience with, with MDL outside of the magazine also in my past with my racing career and stuff when I, I've dealt with your team. Um, it's been, even though predominantly you are a, a, a a uh, property owner and a, a land site owner, you are promoters of boating and, and getting people on the water and and very proactive in trying to encourage you know safe boating and, and that whole lifestyle that comes with it. Um, so yeah, it's great to see these different shows being a, a real asset there. Um, Tim, obviously, do you have a plan B, so to speak, if uh, restrictions, et cetera, um, for your event plans? So I guess I guess as a starting point, the restrictions have certainly um, 
I suppose, tailored how we have started to plan the events in the first instance. You know, one of our main objectives is to make sure that we can facilitate the running of a safe, um, sustainable and an enjoyable event, but also consider um, and plan for any potential risks that may arrive. Um, I think with all the four shows that we've got planned for 2021 and indeed what we did in 2020, um, we've created a COVID-19 secure event and we've taken as many steps as we can do to mitigate the risks of transmission in line with whatever the guidance happened to be for those points in time. Um, you may have already seen that the um, Thames Valley show, which we planned for April, we have already postponed and that is now going to be taking place in July. Um, I think it's the 9th, 10th and 11th of July. So we have got other dates in mind if we do need to pull shows back due to whatever is happening with the guidance itself. Um, but as we saw in September, um, it really will depend um, on those guidance changes at the point that they happen. And Tim, do you think also by being the landowner, by not having to rent a space to run a show and things like that, you can remain a bit more sort of nimble and, and um, adapt accordingly so that when you've got those plan Bs in place, um, you've got a little bit more flexibility to work with your uh, your tenants and, and uh, adapt to those restrictions accordingly? We are, we are certainly very fortunate that for the three show, well, sorry, three out of the four shows we're doing this year, that we have other marinas close by, which still allow um, our tenants and our brokers to be able to do something if the worst does happen. Um, but I guess the, the reality is it's it's certainly beneficial that we own the land space, but the powers that local authorities now have do also mean that what, what whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Um, but it is certainly helpful to us to have local marinas nearby. So if the worst did happen, then we can still move boats around fairly quickly, um, which isn't a detriment for people that are exhibiting. Yeah, great. Well, um, Mike, steering this um, uh, the ship of being the captain of uh, MDL, um, do you do you see that the um, the regional sort of orientated smaller shows um, are the way forward? Interestingly, not necessarily. I mean, regional shows uh, are not a new thing. Um, you know, both MDL and our main competitors have operated really, really successful and well-managed and well-run shows in specific locations for years. And a lot of them focus on, you know, uh, tenant activities. Some of them focus even on some of the really big brands. So I think the regional shows have a, a role to play. They have a, a, a place. Um, what they give... Um, uh, us the opportunity to do is uh, organize smaller, more exclusive shows that are perhaps targeted on uh, different customer types or, or different specific brands in different locations where they're appropriate. Um, you know, there's some really, really major uh, international shows that, that happen every single year. Um, Southampton, Dusseldorf uh, and other shows around the world. And, and, you know, they're amazing shows, but they're also open to uh, the general public to come and have an enjoyable time, get into water sports, to really enjoy the customer experience of learning what a boating is all about and perhaps you know on that day or one day go and buy a boat um, we can't really offer that and it's not any part of our strategy what we can offer is a much more personal uh, experience and an opportunity to get our tenants you know wares in front of, uh, of customers that want to buy boats perhaps the ones that are ready to go um, and so I think every different boat show has a place and our four boat shows, uh, you know, hopefully they'll be successful this year, um, will uh, we'll hopefully you know, form a place um, for, the, you know, the future and, and future years. And I'm sure we'll be able to refine them uh, as we go. Yeah, definitely. And that, that kind of sort of leads me on really to where you're talking about public and the larger boat shows, etc. cetera. Um, uh, Tim, do you have a plan where you, you can um, manage that footfall and, and, could you sort of talk us through maybe some of those COVID measures that you've you put, uh, the safety measures that you'd be implementing for people visiting these shows? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think first of all, all the shows we do are they're customer focused. They're uh, ticketed only events, which essentially means everyone has designated uh, time slots, uh, which they can contend. And that, that helps us uh, control the crowd density throughout the day. Um, I suppose in terms of trying to make sure we can control numbers, the shows are only marketed really for serious perspective bars of boats and associated land-based products. Um, and they're not open to the general public, which enables smaller quantity of visits, uh, visitors through the show, um, ensuring we get a maximum benefit to our exhibitors. 
Um, now, when people start to arrive at the show, the, the um, event flow itself um, is essentially a designated one-way system. Um, and that allows people to come into welcome area and that allows us to greet the guests and it allows for people to do things like test and trace. Um, because of a requirement to pre-book time slots with not only the ward side but also land side exhibits, um, the guests in each party can therefore be limited and it enables us to limit the capacity of the event as a whole. So depending on where the restrictions lie, we can limit from say 150 visitors to 250 visitors. And as we stagger that times through the day, it means we can have a maximum cap on the amount of people in any area of that show at any given time, um, which essentially means we can allow for social distancing at every stage throughout of the whole site, which means everyone is kept very safe and the whole show is run within COVID secure guidelines. So would you, your exhibitors be uh, looking at sort of maybe, um, let's say they've got a, a 40 foot motor cruiser and they're, they're booking clients in to have a, a, a viewing, mm -hmm. that these will be, majority will be pre-appointment and they'll, they'll be coming down, they'll probably be people that they're already engaged with um, and it gives them a See? chance to come and touch the field the boat. Absolutely. So these are pre-booked. Um, there's 90 minutes which customers have got to spend time coming into the show and getting onto the boats and then the boats have time to be cleaned down afterwards. So essentially someone can have a real time to have a proper look without worrying about others being there and it also allows the brokers then to clean down boats after etc. Um, but I suppose one of the things we are looking at adding this year which adds um, a bit more um, complexity but also means a wider field of people can view the boats which again is designed to help the exhibitors is the fact they can also do this virtually so not only will you have people coming in face to face but we'll also have people being able to do virtual tours at the time of the show as well perfect great stuff okay so that's going to lead me on to one of your shows which is obviously this new uh green tech boat show this sounds really interesting and um an intensive part of mdl's sort of event lineup can you hmm. sort of talk us through this particular event and why that's maybe different to the other shows it's yeah, absolutely. It's probably um, it's probably going to be the most exciting event I think we're, we're holding this year, just because of the fact it is pointed in the way it is, and the fact it's as new as it is. But the show is specifically designed for boat owners who are wishing to make that switch to greener options, um, or perspective owners who would like to start their boating journey in the most environmentally friendly way possible. Like as a, as a business, we are definitely committed to a cleaner and greener future. And over the last few years, what we've seen has been the scales tip now between customers looking to um, wanting to switch to actually having much more numbers wanting to make sure they are environmentally responsible. But the honesty is it's a fairly confusing market. I think there's more and more companies now, not just in the UK, but also wider across Europe and the rest of the world, which are producing some fantastic sustainable products, amazing leaps in technology in terms of environmental friendliness. But for the average boat owner, we need something that brings green technologies together in practical ways, which helps people understand what is available and how that can enhance their sailing needs. Um, I think a lot of our customers can struggle to unpick some of the options that are available to them within the budgets or time they may have. Um, so the way we're putting this together, um, the event will hopefully certainly look at the plans we should be presenting all this type of information in a practical way and showcasing um, all the green technologies that are actually currently available in the UK, but people may not know about. Yeah, great. Well, um, from past experience with MDL, um, you guys have, uh, kept you know being green at sort of like a forefront you've you've got these new gyms which we announced on our boating new show recently where mm -hmm. converting human energy back to the grid um i know previously that um, i think it was ocean village you may correct me if i'm uh wrong mike but you've got uh, oyster farms or or, or uh, muscle beds or something part of uh, some uh green uh, campaign from a few years ago um so these sort of ideals that seem to be sort of a proof a sort of a driving force behind MDL. Is that your sort of continued focus? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're incredibly lucky, aren't we, that um, we, you know, we provide a service in a, uh, an environment that's uh, that's got almost everything. You know, it's got um, you know large uh, land areas, nice you know nice grass, nice environment to enjoy on the land side, but also it's on the water and the the water, the sea around the whole of the UK. It's it's one of the most important uh, sort of e economies. 
uh, of the country, but it's also a, a fantastic place for people to be able to really enjoy themselves. And without that, uh, and without that being looked after and you know sustained for the you know the next five, ten, fifteen, twenty, forty, fifty years, um, then that enjoyment won't be there in the future. And so it's really important that the stuff that um, NDL is doing uh, is has always got a environmental focus, is always uh, trying to improve sustainability, is trying to um, also develop a, a, a culture of um, uh, understanding amongst our customers as to, to as to the way we can all behave together to um, to help you know help the environment in so many different ways. Um, you know, we we look at every element of our business in uh, from an environmental point of view. So we're just about to agree new terms on a with a waste disposal provider. You know, your reader, readers might think, well, that's that. How is that interesting? How is it exciting? Well, it's exciting because. Um, there's an opportunity for us to segregate our waste more effectively, for more of our waste to be uh, recycled, um, and uh, for us to, you know, work with our customers to really help their own customer journey uh, in understanding how they can help us improve the environment overall. We're also investing in things like solar cells, solar panels on a lot of our uh, building infrastructure, which is great. You know, as power um, either providing power to uh, tenants or, or or going back to the uh, back to the grid, and we've got all sorts of clean water initiatives. Uh, including um, uh, one where we are taking the water off the bottom of boats, i.e., you know, when they're sprayed off when they come ashore, and that's all uh, filtered through through a system called Filterbund, uh, and we then put clean water uh, back into the uh, the rivers and estuaries. So we've been rolling that uh, that program out over the last. Uh, over the last few years. So as you said earlier, there's obviously the green tech uh, stuff as well with the uh, the MDL fitness brand and the gyms and the, the green tech show and all of that. And, you know, environmental is just one part of what we do, but it's a hugely important part. Um, and, I, and I like to think everybody in the organization who works for the organization recognizes that, but also that our customers are encouraged that, um, you know, we want to be part of that. And if, if we can all help be more sustainable, that will be great for, you know, the environment in which we enjoy our boating. Yeah, fantastic. And when I was talking about those um, those oyster beds, I was referring to Ocean Village, which is obviously going to be your uh, your premium site for your Ocean Village boat show this year. Um, but that's going to be run at the same time as your neighbours next door at Southampton International Boat Show. So, what's the thinking behind this, Mike, and running the running your show at the same time as as Sibs? So um, it might be worth just sort of covering how how the sort of timing came about. Mm. So last year was a really really difficult year for for the industry in terms of planning boat shows at all. And right around the world, you know, boat shows have sort of been on, they've been off, they've had dates moved. There's been all sorts all sorts happening. And um, there was a point in time where, uh, from our perspective, it didn't look like there was going to be uh, a show for for whatever reason. Um, and it was I think before British Marine uh, confirmed boats boats 2020. So with Ocean Village being a purpose-built marina, it gives us an opportunity to do, gave us an opportunity to do something for our tenant brokers, um, as Tim said earlier, to get in a safe way those boats in front of customers if we were if we were able to do it. Now our, our view is that having more for people to do in Southampton to be able to attract them to get into the boating industry and enjoy boating uh, has got to be great for the industry uh, and, and helps to develop both you know MDL's products and our competitors' products and our um, obviously the the industry association and so on and, and so forth. So um, from the point of view of planning this year, uh, what we had uh, or what, what we aspire to, I guess, is to be able to within a relatively close locality with where traditionally the Southampton Boat Show, the International Boat Show is at Mayflower Park, offer the opportunity for that um, more uh, bespoke one-to-one -one experience uh, um, that we know some of our customers and some of our brokers uh, and dealers are looking for. Um, the concept that we began uh, last year now, a lot of customers that visit uh, the Southampton International Boat Show park on the Ocean Village Estate. Uh, they walk down to the to the boat show. Obviously, it runs right from uh, almost the ferry port there all the way through Mayflower Park. I mean, what a fantastic uh, location. And what we'd really, really love to do uh, is take the opportunity to, to have um, lots and lots more going on for people in Southampton uh, and perhaps for them to come and uh, perhaps do their boat buying at, uh, at our show if that's already pre-planned. They'll only have 90 to 120 
90 minutes to be able to do that, as Tim said earlier. And then, you know, if, if that's what they want to do, you know, they might move themselves off to the to the international uh, show and, and, you know, walk through all of the other elements of what the marina industry uh, and the marine industry has uh, has has got to offer. I was going to step in if I come. I was going to say if they, I think they can definitely go hand in hand. And I think if we if we do think back to what happened last September, what was fantastic to see was that Sibs had a full water space. So they'd already actually managed to fill all the space that they had. They had a fantastic land exhibition as well, which again had all the space filled out. And the Ocean Village show itself again had all the space filled out. So we know there is an absolute appetite to be able to have as many bits of product and boats at these shows as possible um, and I think what we've also seen this year which has been I think an unplanned consequence of what's happened with COVID but lots more people now getting into boating be that at a really small level or slightly bigger and I think the challenge at the smaller end is where we've got new manufacturers new distributors actually to get their product out into members of the public you need to have a variety of ways to be able to do that um, and that means actually getting into a show like Ocean Village can be truly fantastic because you know you can get dedicated buyers in front of your product at a price which is affordable to any of these new businesses that are picking up and we're certainly seeing a lot of inquiries now and this is really great to see because the one thing everyone wants is an industry to keep growing and the more people we can get into boats and the more people we can get excited about it the better that is for all of us in the long term yeah definitely mike you were going to say something as well i think or has tim covered off on it he's he's uh, he's he's partly covered it off so um i think that's um i think that's really good i think i guess what is worth um we're thinking about and, and sort of saying is that you know, we only, uh, and this sort of comes up in our next question, I guess, is we, we do things that are um, focused on what our, what our customers are looking for. We spend a lot of time researching, thinking, talking to customers like this, both, you know, face-to-face -face and, and sort of in different correspondence in different ways to really understand what it is that, uh, what it is that they want. And, you know, the Ocean Village Boat Show, with its timing, is, is predicated on demand. You know, if there was no demand, as you said earlier, with a landowner, we, we're so fortunate that we can be versatile enough to say, actually, it's not going to work for us this year, or we'd like to move it or change it or develop it um, in relatively short space of time. So the opportunity is very much there uh, because the demand is there. And, uh, and you know, hopefully the, the two shows will be hugely successful uh, for the industry and attract a huge amount of people and amount of interest when perhaps some other pastimes, overseas holidays and so on this year look like they might uh, they might have some restrictions. I suppose also for your uh, your tenants that obviously are paying their rent each month and are, are trying to run their their brokerage or, or whatever their sort of uh, uh, business may be, um, it's great for them to see that essentially their landlord also reinvesting in the industry and not just a land uh, site owner. You're you're, you're actively um, promoting and invested heavily into helping them grow their businesses. And I, so what, what would you like to see MDL being recognized for in terms of its contribution to the marine industry as a whole, and obviously through the pedigree of, of MDL's history? Well, we've been in business for um, over 45 years now. So um, obviously we, um, we like to think we know how to operate a marina, but we haven't got all of the answers. And the reason I say that is that um, the industry is changing. Um, you know, society is changing, but the industry is changing. It is developing, it is evolving. Um, and I think what we uh, want ourselves to be recognized as a, a business that listens to its customers, listens to its tenants and stakeholders, uh, and tries to come up with uh, products that add value to um, uh, to their boating life, add value to their enjoyment, but actually also encourages customers to think twice about perhaps leaving the industry and going to do another pastime like, um, you know, motorhomes or, or you know, there's all sorts of things that people can go and do now. Um, what, what, what I'd like our business to be able to do is keep those customers in boating uh, through their entire boating life. And as Tim said earlier, that might be from buying a small sports boat all the way up to a, a sun seeker. Um, and you, you will have seen, I know you may have talked about it on interview before, we've launched a new product uh, this year. And that product called Otium reinforces this point around giving our customers choice and giving our customers options in the the way that they do their boating, the way that they enjoy their boating uh, pastime. So it's that sort of development uh, that we want to be um, recognised for. And I suppose that the last and perhaps one of the most important points is, is that we are, you know, a, a quality uh, open organisation, you know, with um, 
good environmental credentials. We operate with integrity. We provide a great uh, customer service, and and hopefully um, through you know the ongoing feedback of our customers, uh, we can you know just develop that and develop that even more to be uh, to, to to be the very best. And hopefully that just brings great standards to the industry, uh, not just the marina but the marine industry uh, as a whole. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think that um, from from my experience. With um, I recently checked out your Wolverston site with the um, the lovely new um, uh, lodges there. Um, there are other elements that are constantly growing within MDL that really promote um, uh, family and safe recreation and getting on the water and uh, and that, that's brilliant to see. Um, and, and I know that there are there's potential elements that uh, uh, Tim and I have, have spoken about where um, there's a constant desire from your team to to grow and add value to the to the end user, whether that's somebody that's booked a holiday in a lodge or they're they're uh, using a, a marina berth or whatever. And, and I have to say that um, where we keep our boat at MDL Torquay, the team there are fantastic. Um, through all the recent storms and stuff, we didn't have to worry. The boat was looked after and um, kept an eye on. Um, the facilities through the lockdowns, um, when we've obviously been uh, going to the boat for work purposes to maybe um, uh, test something on the boat, etc. All the facilities have been immaculate, super clean. Um, everybody's been very, very safe, and it's um, it's been a really, really good experience using uh, uh, MDL Torquay. And obviously, now and again, our other local one being QAB are, are a brilliant team, also. So, thank you for that hospitality. Um, You're very welcome. It's great feedback. <laughs> Uh, good good um, f f thank you for mentioning it <laughs> well and, and also when when we when we turn up it's it, you know many people don't know that we're pbr so we're not getting special treatment um we, we turn up like any other birth holder and it's um it's really great to see um not only the the, the care that we get as a as a as a birth holder but um you know when i'm when i'm sat on our axopar and i'm using it as a mobile office and working i do clock the guys walking up and down, checking everybody's boats, whether it's a small jet ski right up to the big stuff. So there's a real care and attention there to, to, to everybody that's that's on your land. So, yeah, it's, it's great to see. Gents, thank you so much uh, for your time today and to chat about your plans for 2021 um, and uh, the excitement there about these, these shows, but also the care and the attention that you're putting in behind the scenes to uh, deliver these in a safe way. Um, so thank you very much for your time today. Thank you as well. Pleasure. Nice to speak to you again. Cool. Cool. Cheers. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for watching this episode. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to PBR TV. Thank you again and see you soon.